So now how do we test a claim about a mean when sigma is not known? That's section 7.3, guys. So I'm going to do more of section 7.3. The amount of water consumed per week by Montana residents is normally distributed with an unknown mean. A simple random sample of 26 residents. So N is 26, guys. So start writing these details because you need them when you input data into your calculator has a mean value of 120.3 gallon, that's X bar. Remember, you're testing the population mean. You don't know the population mean, you have the sample mean. And a standard deviation of 10 gallons. He didn't say population standard deviation, he's referring to the sample guys. So you have to use the simple S. This is the big deal here, because if you don't know that this is S, you'll end up using, you know, just the wrong test. Because if it is sigma, you would use Z test. And if it is S, you will use a T distribution test. The city of Bosman claims that the average water consumed in the state of Montana is not 125 gallons. So can someone tell me what would be the null and the alternative and where is the claim? Wait, so what did you say about uh, finding out which formula to use? How do you know? This is sample standard deviation, right? Mm -hmm. If it is S, then it's a T test. Oh, okay. And if it is sigma, it's what? Z test. Okay. And he, sigma, he has to mention population standard deviation. He didn't mention, he's telling you a sample of 26 has a mean and standard deviation. So he's referring to the sample. That's why we use S here. Now, what is the null and the alternative hypothesis, guys? Oh, the null is the uh, mu equals 125, and the alternative is doesn't equal 125. And what this is, is the, what, claim. What is the claim? The claim is right the here. Let's agree. Yeah. Look, it says is not not equal. Okay. Well, you can see that there is a hint here. I said calculate the test statistic t. So that means you're using a t test. Okay, so the five steps that I mentioned yesterday, guys. The first step is to state the null and the alternative hypothesis. The second step is to convert this one to a z-score. Uh, and I gave you the formula yesterday. We did this. That's the formula. But then when we work with T, guys, the formula changes slightly. Watch, see how it changed the formula. This becomes a T. And the sigma becomes what, guys? What do I change sigma to? S. S, that's it. So it's still, a and they call it test statistics. So it's either Z or T. In section 7.2, when sigma is known, look here, it says not known. We use Z, which is Z test. And here in this section, we use T. So it's, but it's very much the same formula, guys. You do the same math in there. But we're going to save you time from doing the math because if you are to do this by hand, this is what you would do. You put 120.3 minus the mean. We assume that the null hypothesis is true until proven otherwise. Just like we assume the defendant is not guilty until proven otherwise divided by s which is 10 over the square root of 26. this is if you do the work by hand but we're going to use the calculator and let me show you the t test you go to stat tests actually from now till the end of the semester this is what all well, most what you do guys the stat tests and look you can see the z and the t Again, from my experience teaching this course, guys, for so many years, when students don't do well on this chapter, is they get confused between which test do I use, a Z or a T. You use a Z test when he gives you population standard deviation, and you use a T test when he gives you sample standard deviation. And he did give us a sample standard deviation here. Should be by default instead. Okay, mu zero, again. What do you input in there? In here, you input the value from the null hypothesis, which is 125. X bar, you already know what uh, he gave us X bar, guys, which is 120.3, watch. If you know what you're doing, it's gonna be very easy problem, 10, uh, N is 26. And now here, 
you input the sign that you see in the alternative hypothesis. You copy the sign that you see in the alternative hypothesis, which is not equal to. And now it's a blinking, but look, the second one is selected. You must press enter here. Now it is selected. And then you can hit uh, calculate or draw. If you hit the draw, you're gonna see a visual of the p-value. See, there's two, two p-value p is on the right, on the left, two quantities because it's two tails. Okay, so T is what? Three decimal places will be negative 2.397. And calculate the p-value. We're not doing the critical value, so just the p-value approach. And you can see the p-value, guys. It's 0 0.0244. Okay. Uh, what is the decision at the 0 0.01 significance level? Let me just repeat, guys, how do you use step number three in making a decision? We have to make a decision to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than alpha, which is the significance level right here, we reject HO. If p-value is more than alpha, we fail to reject HO. So hypothesis- If it's more or, more or equal, it doesn't work. No, less, less than or equal here. You will never have the equal. You're not gonna have the equal at all. So oh, okay. that's why I don't put it. Um, but p-value less than or equal to alpha, you reject HO, p-value greater than alpha, and you always round p-value to four decimal places, guys. So you won't have the equal sign at all. You don't deal with it. So that is very important, guys. You, do, you cannot mix up those two because this is, you mix them up, you get every single problem done wrong. If the p-value is less than alpha, you reject HO. Here's an acronym here, guys, probably can remember it this way. P-value low, HO must go. So when a p-value is small, HO must go. We reject the null hypothesis. So hypothesis testing, guys, is about whether you reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you guys agree with me that 0 0.0244 is not less, 0 0.0244 is bigger than 0 0.01. Correct? It is bigger. So what's the decision, first or second? Fail to reject? Yep. OK. Now here is how we write the conclusion now. Now the conclusion for a reader, in the context of the claim, you, write, you have to write conclusion in words so people can understand What's your decision? Are you supporting the claim or you're not supporting the claim? If you fail to reject this, guys, and your claim happened to be in the other one, you cannot support the claim because you're saying probably this is good. You say, I, I cannot reject this. So probably then it's likely that my claim is not good. And you say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So, Every time you, has, you have a failed decision, you start with this. There is not. So fail, you have to put not. Enough evidence. What's the level of significance that you use 0 0.01? At the 0 0.01 level of significance. Two. If you're doing this in my math lab, now you're going to see a drop down menu. It's going to give you two words to select from reject or support. When the claim, guys, is in the alternative hypothesis, pick the word support always. And when the claim is in the null hypothesis, select the word reject. Here, you're not saying that when you pick support, you're not saying that you're supporting, you're saying you're not supporting. So there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to support the claim uh, by the city of Bosman. Mr. Bazzi, 
Yes. I have a question. If I do have the sigma and the standard, the 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 s the symbol standard deviation in the question what which then one sigma are sigma then z test ah z test uh, uh, simply once sigma is known that you're stuck with the standard even if they give the sample uh, because we are we always know the sample there's no problem with knowing the sample uh -huh. because if you have if you have the data you already know everything about the sample so s is always you know known it's the issue with sigma okay you got it yeah thank you yeah. so uh so there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance to support the claim by the city of bosman okay let's do another one guys a credit card wondered whether given frequent miles for every purchase would increase card users so they're deciding if we give frequent miles to people, will they use their credit more? They spent more money on their credit card, which has a current mean of 2,500 per year. They gave a free mile uh, to a simple random sample of 24 credit holders and found the sample mean to be 2542 and look guys it says sample standard deviation you cannot say sigma here it's s 109 okay can you guys tell me what the null and the alternative hypothesis are let's read it again it says a credit card company wondered whether given frequent uh, flyer miles for every purchase would increase card usage so they're making a claim if we give you not know, just more a frequent flyer, increase the frequent flyer, you know, just will people use their credit card more, which has a current mean of 2,500. Okay. Uh, so people are spending an average of 2,500 per year. If they give frequent flyer miles, would people spend more than this average? How would you state the null and the alternative hypothesis? It's again still about the mean. Who can tell us? So if it's more than 2,500, this will be the claim? That is the claim. That's what they're claiming. And then, guys, now you know what the null is going to be. And if you guys tell me, how do I know they didn't say explicitly more? Look what they say. Increase. Increase is a key word. It means more card usage. What is the usage now is 2,500, so it's more than 2,500. Definitely, guys, it can be less. No credit card company would look for their people, uh, their uh, uh, credit card holders to spend less. They want to charge more interest and they want to gain more money. So they wanted to spend more on the credit card. That's, of course, the case. So it is a t-test, guys, because S is given here. So it's a t-test. OK. Um, and by, by the way, guys, had I done this on the calculator, I would have gotten that. If you do subtract that, these two and then divide by this number, you will get negative 2.397. That's how the calculator is programmed to do it. So let's go to t-test. So if I'm using calculator, I don't need to show the step for the division? No, no. Okay. You don't. 2,500 and 2,542. You see the null hypothesis, I got the value from the null hypothesis 2,500. Uh, S is 109. N is 24, guys. And now you have to pick the proper sign of the alternative, which is greater than. And then I'm going to hit calculate this time just to show you the, the step number two and step number three. There you go. They come together. Look, T and the P value. The P value is the area to the right of T under the curve because I have a right tail test. So T is 1.888.
Usually T is rounded to three decimal places. You can see guys, there is a six there. That's why I went to eight. And P value rounded to four decimal places. Sometimes the book will ask you to do three decimal places, but I usually ask for four. So it's 0 0.0359. Okay, make a decision. You see, once you get those two, and these are the steps that require all the work, guys. They're done on the calculator. So now, based on the p value, uh, I'm hoping that people watch, you know, the videos that I sent a while ago on the p value. I send you three videos to watch all of them or select a few and watch them just to understand and have a feel of the p value. But this number, guys is used in hypothesis testing to make decisions about the claims. P-value less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. P-value more than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, what is it here? Uh, zero, what's alpha? 0 0.01. So would you guys agree with me that the P-value is more than alpha? That's a 3.5%, that's a 1%, so it is more. So what's the decision, guys? Fail to reject. Fail to reject HO. I didn't intend to make it a fail to reject, but it turns out to be a fail to reject HO. And let's write the conclusion. Again, look guys, you can just count on this uh, approach. Fail to, you start with there is not. If it is reject, you start with there is enough evidence. at the significance level, which is 0 0.01. You have to tell the reader that there is alpha involved there. There is a chance that you make a mistake by rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true, which is called the type one error. And alpha is the maximum allowable probability of making type one error. So there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance. Two. Okay, now we have a choice between support and reject. Since the claim is in HA, guys, you use the word support. To support the claim that uh, increasing, uh, that offering frequent flyer miles would increase card usage. We're saying that probably they should not. So if I ask you a question, would you recommend you know, to the credit card company to offer the frequent flyer? I'll tell you, uh, we shouldn't recommend it because we can't have enough evidence to support that. So there is not enough evidence to support the claim that offering frequent flyer miles would increase card usage. And this is what those companies do in the background, guys. They hire statisticians, people who know statistics, you know, just to do the, this kind of work for them and do the research. All right. Uh, next question. There you go. Uh, a fast food outlet claims that the mean waiting time in line is less than 3.5 minutes. You already should be able to write the null and the alternative, guys. So less than 3.5 minutes should be here. If students are wondering why I'm putting the less in HA, you have to remember these are the signs that can go in HA. And these are the signs that must go in HO. So you either have these two together these two pairs together or these two pairs together. No other choices, guys. And you can see now, since I put a less here, right away, guys, you know that this is going to be like that. And it's about the mean still. And can you tell me, guys, where is the claim? H -A. H A again. OK. Uh, okay, a random sample of 15. 
I think you can see how redundant it is now, guys. Pretty much the same thing. It has a mean of 3.4 minutes. Uh, standard deviation 0 0.6. It didn't say population, so it's S. Assume it is S, unless the word population standard deviation is there. At alpha equals 0 0.05. Test the fast food outlets claim. Don't forget, don't worry about using confidence interval. Assume that the population is normally distributed. The, the reason why we have to assume that the population is bell-shaped because the sample size is less than 30. Remember guys, if the sample size is less than 30, we require the original population to be bell-shaped. If it is more than 30, we don't care. Any shape would do. Okay, T-test. Yes. You will have more problems on the test from the t-test than the z-test because the t-test is kind of the norm, guys. So it's, uh, uh, we in real life, we usually don't know the population standard deviation. So it's mostly S, not sigma. Okay, um, U0, oops, uh, 3.5 minutes. Uh, X bar, let me go to the other side now. Uh, uh, X bar is 3.4, guys. It's very important to list them symbols properly. S is 0 0.6. Uh, N is 15. Um, U, okay, now we need the alternative sign. It's a less than. And then let's do a draw. Oh, that's a big p-value here. When you see too much shading, that means you're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value would be, this is the p-value, it's an area under the curve. Now, why do you see it on the left, guys? Because you have a left tail test. So, T is, let's see, you can read it, guys. It's negative 0.646. And this is the p-value, let me write it down. P-value is 0 0.2645. And if you want me just to describe the p-value, let me show you what the p-value is here. It's this area. And what is the value here? This is T from step number two. So the p-value is the area to the left of this test statistic. If this was a positive and that was a greater p-value will be on the right. So what's the decision guys? That's bigger than alpha for sure. So again, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So uh, as you can see, it's all failed to reject today so far. So, uh, that's it did happen and the conclusion so what do i start with guys there is or there is not there is not there is not see i'm gonna do it in red here there is not because of this enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to support the claim that mean waiting time uh, in line is less than 3.5 minutes. That means the food outlet guys could be lying. They're making false claims. We could not support their claim that it is less than 3.5 minutes to wait in line. Next one. Okay, for the next one, let me pause the recording for a second until you key in the data into your calculator.
The Carolina Tobacco Company advertised that its best-selling non-filtered cigarettes contain at most 40 milligram of nicotine. But Consumer Advocate magazine ran tests of 10 randomly selected cigarettes and found the amounts of nicotine. It is a serious matter to charge that the company advertising is wrong. So the magazine editor chooses a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.01. Can the editor prove that the mean nicotine level is greater than 40 milligram? The company is advertising and saying it's at most 40 milligram of nicotine, but the editor of the magazine is saying that it is more than 40 milligram. That means he's accusing the tobacco company of lying to uh, their consumers. Assume that the nicotine levels are normally distributed. Okay, who can help us of stating HO or HA? Remember, you are processing the claim by the editor. It's not the Carolina Tobacco Company who's making the claim. It's the editor of the magazine who's making the claim. So what would be your null and alternative hypothesis, guys? So the null would be mean less than or equal 40. Exactly. And then our claim would be in the alternative. Yep, that's the uh, editor, the, uh, the uh, uh, magazine editor here. All right. Does that make sense, guys? That's how, uh, so you follow the question always. Look, this is the question. It says, whatever the question is, just follow it. And it says greater than 40. That's simple. It's just that simple, greater than 40. Okay. Well, uh, if he gives you a data set, it's a t-test automatically. So just let's go to do a t-test here. How about if there is a data set with and sigma known? Do we use it? Uh, then you use Z test. Oh, okay. Again, I keep saying this. Once you have sigma, you must use a Z test. But yeah, there is a question in section 7.2, as you mentioned, where he gives you a data set and he tells you population standard deviation, then it is a Z test. Yeah, because I thought we always use T with a data set. No, so. unless if sigma is known. Okay. That's a good point. Okay, now guys, we're gonna go to data because I have the input. Okay, I'm U zero. We're testing against which value 40. My list is in L1 frequency, guys, take a note, never touch it. You change one, the entire problem will go wrong. Leave it at one. Frequency equal one means every single item here is repeated only once and which is true. So just leave it always as one. Now choose the alternative sign, which is a gra gra more than guys. Look, I have to press enter. And if you like to visualize the P value, it's gonna be on the right. And let's see. It takes more time to do the graph rather than doing the calculate. Oh, small p-value. All right. Uh, so t is 2.746. T-test. Input is data here. And mu0 is 40. So t is, let me just show you again, guys. 2.746 p-value. I'm gonna copy it exactly with four decimal places, 0, 1, 1, 3. Okay, and now will go to next step. Uh, p-value is 0 0.0113. Okay, and alpha guys is 0 0.01. Okay, bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. 
Fail to reject it, show. Hmm. So H, HO is popular today because we don't fail to reject it. So uh, fail to reject HO and then there is not. enough evidence at the 1%, which is 0 0.01, level of significance to support the magazine editor claim that the amount of nicotine and the tobacco and the cigarettes is more than 40 milligram. So what will happen now, guys, as far as the tobacco company? What will they, what, what can they do now? We they can produce more non-filter cigarettes. They can they can sue the editor of the magazine because he's making he's making false accusations. We prove that the editor magazine uh, a claim is not valid. There's not enough evidence to support the magazine uh, magazine editor claim that the amount of nicotine is more than 40 milligram. But the editor of the magazine can change one thing here and then he will be able to support his claim. What do you think he can change here? Alpha. Alpha. He can make it 5%. If he makes alpha 5%, what will happen here, guys? The p-value will become what? Less than alpha. And when the p-value is less than alpha, what we do? We reject the null hypothesis. And when we reject the null hypothesis and the claim is in the alternative, we support the claim. But maybe he is required to do his study at alpha equals 0 0.01. He cannot change it. This is a false accusation, guys. He's making false accusation. I mean, he was very close. Look, they're very close, but still, he was not be uh, he was not able to support his claim. So the tobacco company is safe, you know, just in their advertisement. All right. So this is about the T uh, test. In summary, guys, what we have done already, we tested the mean using two tests: Z test. I'm just going to conclude this and a t-test. You use this when sigma is known, and you use this one when sigma unknown. As simple as that when testing the mean. Now what we're going to test is test the proportion. And there are no two choices, guys, so no confusion when testing the proportion, the population proportion. It's always a one test. It's called one proportion z-test. I did one exercise yesterday, and then I'm going to follow this up today with more and more exercises. So we'll do uh, quite a bit of exercises on this. That's section 7.4. So we're testing the proportion P now, the probability, the percent. The engineering school at a major university claims that 20% of its graduates are women. In a graduating class of 210 students, 46 were women. Does this suggest that the school is believable? So can you guys help me write the claim of the school? What would you write here? No mean, we don't use this simple anymore, guys. We're talking about the proportion, about the percent. So it's a P. So P equal 20, uh, 0 0.20. Yep. That is correct. And where is the claim here? Is it in it's null? In null. In null, exactly, because it says 20%. That means equal. OK. Uh, this is n, guys. That's the total sample size. And this is the number of successes, the numbers that work in favor of what we're trying to do. We want to see how many women are there at the university uh, in the engineering school. And that's a 46, that's called X. And remember, we talked about P hat in chapter six, which is a sample proportion. This is called X over N. That's a sample proportion, but we're not testing the sample, we're testing the population. We need to generalize. Okay, 
For this, guys, you run what we call one proportion Z test. And then when you run this Z test, guys, it's going to give you two values, just like in section seven, two, and three. It's going to give you the test statistic Z, and it's going to give you the P value. How do you run this test, guys? This is what you do. It's number five. So in chapter seven, guys, you will be using number one, number two, and number five. It's one proportion Z test or proportion Z test. Let's go to it. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this test here. Okay. First of all, you enter the, uh, assume the null hypothesis is true until proven otherwise. So you enter the value from the null hypothesis, 20%. Make sure it's a decimal, guys. Don't put 20. It will not take it. Just 0 0.20. Then you enter the value of x. And what is x here, guys? The smaller value, 46. You mix them up, the calculator will halt, will not do the math for you. n is 210 student. And then uh, we need the sign from the alternative, which is this. And then hit calculate, or let's do let's do a draw. Show you the p value in action. Oh, it's a huge p value. So z is zero point six nine, and the p value is big, guys. So you know ho can't go now because. It has to be low uh, p-value in order for HO to go. So it's 0 0.4902. So this shaded uh, region, guys, on both sides is 0 0.49. If I asked you to tell me what is this shaded region alone, it will be 0 0.49 divided by 2. And this is 0 0.49 divided by 2. OK? So you know this is bigger than alpha. I don't even need to know what alpha is. That's big. So fail to reject HO. Now, I don't know how those problems turn out, all of them to fail to reject HO. I didn't plan them this way, but that's OK. Uh, interpret your decision. OK, you're going to pay attention now. So I said every time you have a fail, you start with there is not. enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance. And now you're using my math lab, guys, and you come here and you see this drop down menu. Choose one of those. Reject or support? What would you choose? Reject. Reject. When the claim is in the null hypothesis, we don't use the word support. But we're not saying that we're rejecting the claim. We're saying we're not rejecting the claim. So in a way, we kind of accepting the claim. Just remember, guys, when you don't reject something, it doesn't mean that you accept it. But there is not much you can do, you know, to change the outcome. So there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to reject. the claim by the engineering school. So they probably, they, probably they are right. We're not rejecting their claim. Okay. So I'm glad that we did this, the claim turned out to be in the null to see how the conclusion, you know, just was. If you ended up rejecting HO, you just say there is enough evidence to reject the claim. So you're saying the claim is bad. Here, you're saying the claim probably is not bad, OK? That's, that is uh, for this section uh, 7.4. That's one exercise on proportion. Let's do another one. And this is, uh, I got this problem, guys, probably online. I think it's real uh, situation. 
So any Boston Boston Celtics fan knows that Shaquille O'Neal, one of the NBA's most dominant centers of the last 20 years, always had difficulty shooting free throws. Over the course of his career, his overall made free throws percentage is 53.3%. During this off season, Shaq is working with an assistant coach on his free throw technique. During the first five games of the next season, Shag made 26 of his 39 free throws attempt. So out of 39, he did 26. He uh, 20, 26 were successful. Do the results provide convincing evidence that Shaq has significantly improved his free throw shooting? Carry out a significance test at the 5% level of significance. Can you guys tell me what we're testing here? What would be the knowledge and the alternative? It's about a percent. We know usually his overall made, we know it's 53.3%, but he's trying to change this. So since they say if he made more than, so it's gonna be yeah. more 53? You got it. because his effort is to improve it. Improve it makes it more. And then the null hypothesis will be less. And I changed 53.3% to decimal, guys. That is exactly what the null and the alternative hypothesis should be, exactly. And we have X is 26, guys. N is 39. And alpha is 0 0.05. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move him, you know, just to the next page, because in the next page, I give you room to just do all of this. There you go. Let me just write them down here. And this is what we're trying to check. Was his percentage improved? Is it better than 53%? That's what his aim, that's what his goal, and we're gonna see if we can support that. N is 39, guys. X is 26. And alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, so again, guys, it's one proportion Z test. Let's do it. Stat number five, 0 0.533 first. X is 30, uh, 26. Remember, X is a smaller value. Uh, N is 39. Uh, we need a greater than. And the alternative, you can see that's the alternative right here. And uh, if you don't want to hit the draw, you just hit calculate, it will be faster. So Z is 0 0.167. And the P value, which is 0 0.0471. That's all I need. And now, guys, this is less than alpha. That's about time to reject HO. That's the first exercise where we reject HO. So the decision is to reject HO. And why? P value is less than alpha. All right. Step five, let's write this carefully, guys. Since we reject HO, we don't say there is not. There is enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to, which word would pick here, guys? Support. Support 
the claim that Shaq has improved is uh, whatever it says uh, has improved his froth, uh, free throw shooting. Mr. Bazi? Mm hmm. Uh, would another way to solve this be to just turn the uh, proportion into a probability? It is actually a probability. But, okay. but you, you just have to solve it still the same way. When I say proportion here, it is a probability. Exactly, it's a probability. His probability before was 53%. Now we're checking if the probability is more than 53%. Okay. Yeah. But look, the word proportion, probability, percent, to you should be the same. It's the same thing. That's what we're testing. I guess my question was, could you just divide 26 by 39? And yeah, get, but that like, will give you the sample. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let, oh, yes, that's P hat. That's what we call P hat, which is 26 divided by 39, which is 0 0.6667. But I know what you're trying to say. This is bigger than that. But no, you know, you remember what we talked about before that you cannot tell the entire story just from one sample results. What about if you do another sample and you get the different numbers and you get different results? That's why you have to perform the hypothesis test. Sure. But sure. I know what but you're in the thinking. result of this, uh, in the result of this test of these 39 free throws we can say that there is enough evidence. Exactly. The 0 yeah. 0.5, 0 and 5. Pr yeah. Probably another sample, you were going to get different results. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. That's, why, that's why in statistics, it's always in, uh, suggested that the sample will be big enough so it will be a reliable sample. Maybe some people will argue here and say, well, this sample is small. Yeah, I can buy into this argument. Probably we should have you not know, just a better uh, sample size or a larger sample size. Yeah, but one value from the proper the sample does not tell us the entire story. That's why we have to develop you know just this test. All right, next one. Uh, eight. I hope that you guys feeling com more comfortable with it. As you can see, it's not hard at all. Just same steps as in every single section. A drug manufacturer claims that fewer than 10% of patients who take its new drug for treating Alzheimer's disease will experience nausea. So you guys can see fewer. You need to understand what fewer means. It's less than. So PP. Once he mentioned percent, guys, just use P here. So less than 10. And I'm pretty sure you should agree with me that the claim is in the alternative. OK. Now they have to collect a sample, 250 patients. And X is 23 experienced nausea. Perform a significance test at the 5% significance level. Okay, so it's one prop Z test again. Okay. Uh, so this is step one. Step two, if you were to do this by hand, guys, it would have been this. And this is what the students mentioned earlier what, with the P hat. P hat will be 23 divided by 250. Uh, but you will be able to use technology, guys. OK, a student's asking for a break after this. Yes, we'll give you a break. I need one, two for a few minutes after we finish this. Uh, we're going to be using a one prop Z test. This is the formula for the standardized test statistic for the proportion, guys. And if you just want to put in the details, P hat will be 23 divided by 
250, which is what if I do 23 divided by 250? When you try to get help from the book, uh, help me solve this, they're gonna show you the steps just like we're doing, you know, we're not without the use of calculator. So uh, that's why it's very important to take good notes when it comes to using technology, because you can always uh, substitute, you know, just with the use of technology. So you will put here 0 0.092 minus P, you'll just pick it from the null hypothesis divided by p which is 0 0.10 and q guys is probability of failure will be 0 0.9 divided by the sample size which is 250 and now the calculator whatever i get off the calculator that's going to be the answer to this so we're going to do a proportion z test watch guys So 0 0.10, x is 23, n is 250. And we're testing what, uh, less than 10% of patients experience nausea. So it's a less than, and let me do a draw, show you the p-value in action. Oh, it's a huge p-value. So Z is negative 0 0.42. P value is, that's a deciding uh, value here, 0 0.3366, which is guys more than alpha, of course. It's a big P value. And as I told you guys, if I sketch the p-value here, this is z, that's zero. That's a z-score, negative 0 0.42. And the p-value is the area to the left of this. Because I have a left tail test. And guys, we can find this p-value without even using the proportion z test from chapter five. You can find the area to the left of z equal negative 0 0.42. I mentioned that in my video yesterday. Do you guys know how we can find this area using chapter five techniques? We need the area to the left of z equal negative 0 0.42. Normal CDF. Yes, very good. It's normal CDF negative a million and then negative 0 0.42 then 0 0.1 and I can assure you guys I'm not gonna do it it's gonna be 0.3366 well let me do it just confirm it I'm gonna be in trouble if it doesn't work stat sorry not stat second and distribute normal cdf negative a million uh negative 0 0.42 we won't be exactly what we put because i rounded c and zero one there we go three three seven two three three six six the only reason guys i but slightly different because i rounded this one the calculator doesn't uh, round so more than alpha fail to reject that's step number three step number four fail to reject ho and let's write a conclusion that's very very important that we write the conclusion properly so my math lab will give you two choices there is or there is not which one uh, would you select there is not. There is not because it's a fail. Enough evidence. It's all about the evidence, guys. At the 5% level of significance, or you can say significance level. Two, 
Now my math lab or my stat lab is gonna give you choices between reject or support. Which one is gonna be? Support. Support, yeah. To support the drug manufacturer claim that and just select it or copy it, guys. You're gonna see just but I'm gonna copy the claim that fewer than 10% of patients who take uh, it's a new drug. So they're they're giving us a false claim, guys. It's a new drug for treating. Alzheimer's disease will experience. So probably it is more than 10%. We could not support their claim. And uh, this is very much a uh, chapter seven up to section four.